Howdy folks, Kirk here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. My son and I, what we're going to do today is fix this wall here. A uh, fella, we're in a uh, condominiums, a guy backed up and hit it. And I was out here the other day looking at it and I said, man, you know, I know somebody in this complex. I haven't seen him in like 20 years, a fella named Les. And he says, uh, work said lucky. I said, work said Safeway, close enough. And he had said, Got a wife named Edie. I thought I thought it was Evie all these years, and we just got here. And come here, Evie. Let me. We go back. We go back about 20 years. I haven't just pulled up. It's like uh, Evie, right? Anyhow, let me get back to this. But I wanted to say hello to her because we, a lot of my friends who watch us, are gonna say, Evie, I haven't seen her in 20 years. Anyhow, what this is is, uh, okay, he hit this, and he asked me, the fellow who hit it, said, Well, Kurt. I've seen some of your stuff. Can't you just nail this in and plaster right over it? And I said, absolutely, I could, but will I? No, 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 that's not how we do things because uh, it's like if I did that, we'd have no waterproofing barrier. It's like being in a race and um, you, you think you're not going to win and you just quit. I always say, give it your best shot. You have nothing to be ashamed of because I told him it'd have no waterproofing capabilities if we just spread over it and he says well didn't you say you were going to go to this stud here and you can't guarantee it and I thought yeah but at least like in that race I'm going to give it my best shot I'm not going to give up if we take it to the stud here we can put all new paper here to here and it's better than just putting cement over here and having paint as a band-aid so what we have here is line wire they put I'll show you something I don't know if your camera can see this Jay because a, a light's going to adjust see the um, the wire, okay, you can, can it yeah. see this? Okay, this is line wire. They put nails here and then they, they wrap it and wrap each one and it stops the paper from coming back so they don't use too much cement. But when I was looking at it, I told the fellow, I said, well, you know, their, their walls, it's, the membrane is compromised anyway. It has nothing to do with you hitting the wall or anything, it's just an old wall. And he said, well, I did him a favor? I said, no, not really. The impact of the car hitting this regardless if this wasn't broke would have broken it up uh, would have broke the stucco so what we're going to do is i'm going to slide some paper under here and take it down and the fella here's one more thing out here <clears throat> okay jay's jay's getting ready to remove this and we're gonna we're gonna take it to the stud and i told like i tell everybody i said you know guys if you want me to get waterproof it guarantee it you got to take the whole square off Nine out of 10 people say, Kirk, are you out of your mind? Just do what's necessary, especially in a situation like this. So we're gonna take it, remove the spout, take it to about right here to here. We're gonna uh, put new lath, scratch it, brown it, and then I'm gonna uh, texture it all the way to the top with a bonding agent. So, cause this is a Santa Barbara smooth mission finish and they're real tough to match unless you go from corner to corner, to ceiling to top. So. Anyway, we're going to get started and bust it all out. When we get to that stage of scratching brown and, and repair, we'll show it to you. Okay, guys, I'll show you another thing. Uh, the stud is right here, and the stud is right here where I put my finger. I know because uh, I just grabbed a measuring tape to measure from here to here to mark it, and Jay pointed that out. He says, yeah, what are you doing? You can see the stud. So what we do is we want to be on there. You figure... The stud is from here to here. That's all we have to work with. So what we got to do is we got to break it out here. We're probably going to take it around right here. We got to break it out here and stay on this stud here, which is really tough to do. We're just going to remove this whole section. After we break it out, we'll have to cut all these wires too. We cut all these wires. Good morning. We cut all the wires. And then we just remove this, repaper it. When we get to that stage, we'll show it to you. And there you have it, Jay doing the breakout. Dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Can't tell you guys enough about wearing a mask when you're doing this stuff. If, you had a if this was dark and there was a flashlight, you look into the beam of light, you would see all that dust in the air. If Jay didn't have his mask on, he would be inhaling it. I'm standing downwind myself. Okay guys, Jay's got this big piece and you better wear gloves if you're gonna do this because once he gets a couple more pieces, that whole slab is gonna come off and it, believe me, it weighs a lot more than it looks. That's about 150 pounds right there. There you go. 
The last thing you want to do is hold that and have those wires rip it out your hand and rip a hole in your hand. Okay guys, Jay got this stucco out. I just figured I'd show you the line wire. Now, they put this every six inches, they take this wire, wrap it up, wrap it up, and that's what holds it so you don't use a whole lot of stucco on these walls. Back in the 1940s and 50s, they used to use this all the time. Anyway, we're going to put about four layers of paper over here, and we have, we have pretty decent paper. It's not that bad, but it's not great. It is what it is. Anyhow, we're going to go ahead and paper this up, and Jay's going to get a mix going. Okay, guys, I'm leaving this line wire on because it gives me a little bit more solid backing. Today we have paperback wire with the wire on it uh, for studs, although today we don't use paperback wire anymore because the new codes require everything to have a shear panel on it, shear uh, plywood. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my curve of this paper. I do things a lot of times without even thinking about it, but for you folks, you want to put your curve on this stud here, then take a hammer tacker and get into this stud. And we are going to cock the piss out of this. I'm actually, I'm actually going to put two more layers. So I have a total of four layers because what I want is, I want this to be sturdy. So when I, I don't have to use four buckets in, well, actually, I'll use, I'll use about four buckets as is, but if I make this very sturdy, then I'll only have to use about three. So I'm going to double this one up, I'm going to cut it here, tuck it in here, and we are going to caulk the mess out of these edges here, and now I'm back on the stud here. So now this makes this more solid. I'm going to put two more layers, we're going to tuck underneath this. New paper has to go under this, otherwise it's going to have an issue. So anyway, that's where we're at, and then we're going to put the wire on it. Okay guys, we are set to do the wire. Now, technically I was going to use this wire right here. We got all kinds of wires on our truck. You name it, we have it. But we did a job about two weeks ago where I was explaining how to do soffits. And I use this for ceilings or lids, soffits, whatever you want to call them. When the studs are, say, uh, 24 inch centers, it's very rigid. This is called rib lath. So I figure I don't really use or I don't need this stuff, so I might as well use it here. And I can follow my stud here, although I can't see it because I can see my small staples. And this, this particular lath here, very, very rigid. It doesn't matter if you go on top or underneath. Let's say, for example, when I get to the stage, I'm going to put this wire right here and go over and tie in. If we don't tie in, we'll get a perimeter crack. Right here, I'm going to put this down and I'm going to go right over it. Say we get underneath these wires the best we can and get on top of these guys and just staple them in. Okay, then I take these wires here, because remember, if we don't do a wire to wire, we will get a perimeter crack. And even if we do wire to wire, we could still get a perimeter crack when we get ready to do the mud. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a few concrete nails in here, because here's where our concrete is. And the, the next time we come out here to do our uh, scratching brown coat, I'm going to get all this dust off. I'll just hose it down. Now the edges get s this polyurethane caulking right here. We caulk it really, really, really well. That's the best you can do with what we have to work with. I'm still not done stapling it, but just trying to prove a point. This uh, polyurethane caulking on both sides is a must. It doesn't matter what brand you use, as long as it's a good polyurethane caulking. Anyhow, that's how you put this back together after our inspection. Then we're going to come back and do the, the scratching brown coat and match the existing finish. But I thought I'd show you folks how to lath it if you're unfortunate enough to go through your own wall or your neighbor's wall with a car. My name is Kirk, Jason on the camera as usual. Also as usual, we thank you folks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.